Thanks for joining me today. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to create a social media strategy for your Rotary Club or district. This is made especially for Zones 2526. My name is Corinne Cavanaugh, and I'm happy to join you today. First, we're going to learn how to define a strategy, and I'm going to give you a specific example for District 5030. Our mission is to nurture online social media communities so that people become inspired, empowered, and connected. Now, social media means uh, online communities such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and others. We really want to focus on nurturing these so that we can bring together different types of people, be that potential members or current members of Rotary. First, when we're defining a strategy, we really want to think about how we want to use our social media channels and then look at data available so that we can determine your overall goal or metrics, determine your audience, determine content. So what are you going to post and to who? Then determine how to handle engagement. So who is really responsible for what? And then look at marketing and communications, how we can get the word out about our social media channels. First data point we would want to look at is our social media channel demographics. So this is a general study done by Pew Research Center um, in 2014, and it really shows you, gives you a good idea of who on the internet is using social media. And if you take a hard look, it, it turns out both women and men really of all ages. In fact, ages 65 plus is the fastest growing demographic using social media. And you can tell different education levels and also different income levels. In fact, one of the highest income levels is 75,000 plus annually. So we definitely have an opportunity here to use the internet, specifically social media, to reach out to folks of all ages. So we want to identify our current social networks. For District 5030, it turns out, um, just through different times and different people, they've established quite a few social networks. So it looks like they have a Facebook uh, page, they have a Facebook group, they have a LinkedIn group, they have a YouTube channel, and they have a Twitter account. Now that's a lot of social media communities to keep up with. So when uh, considering your social networks, you really wanna look at the data and see how your channels are already being adopted. So in this case, we can see the Facebook page has 530 fans. And then the next largest group is a LinkedIn group with 221 members. The major difference between those two high-performing uh, social channels is the Facebook page is public. So people can like that page, be it members or non-members, really anybody in the public. The LinkedIn group is private. You have to request to become a member of that group, and then someone will let you be a part of it. That's the major difference. Looking at the other channels, you can see here, not very many people engaging or even knowing about those channels. So that helps us consider what we might really want to focus on moving forward. Also something to keep in mind is when we're looking at market share, we find that Facebook is number one and LinkedIn is really number two. YouTube is a bit of an exception because uh, it is a Google property. So Overall, they have very high numbers, but when you're looking at social media engagement, those are normally the two top social media channels you would want to focus on. So when considering what channels we might want to focus on for this district, um, we've decided to move forward with the Facebook page and the LinkedIn group. Next, we took a quick snapshot of the district demographics using DAC database. So we can see here the average age of our members somewhere around 40 to 70. So really that's the sweet spot so we know who we would write content for. And looking at gender, 
we can see that it's about, um, you know, twice as many men as women. So this type of information can really help inform what content we might post later. Next, another snapshot from DAC database. Here we can see our membership trend over time. So we can see here that membership has been uh, declining. But what this means to our social media strategy is any time we can focus and paint a really great picture to potential new members, we would want to do that. So they can actually see what's happening with uh, our district just by visiting our social media pages. All right, so what are our goals? Why would we want to work on our district social media channels? What does success look like? Again, this is an example for the district. You can always adapt this just for your club. So as a group, we discussed this and we decided, you know, we wanna let everyone in the district know about and discuss challenges and opportunities in our district. We think we want to create these channels to be a value add for current members and help attract new members and also tell people, potential members, about events happening in our Rotary community. Then we also would like to build credibility for our Rotary district. So when people search us on the internet, they'll see great things. Simply put, we want to communicate our story. Anytime you're making an effort doing something, spending time and energy, I believe you've really got to look for key performance indicators or KPIs. So how do we know if our efforts are working and what should we keep an eye on? Two key metrics here. We want to look for reach of our posts on LinkedIn in our LinkedIn group and on our Facebook page. Each of these channels, LinkedIn and Facebook, have tracking on their posts. So you can actually see how many people you are reaching. Next, we wanna look at engagements. And these are the numbers, uh, number of times people have liked, commented, or shared a post on either the Facebook page or the LinkedIn group. This is essentially a, a popularity barometer. So if you're posting great content, they'll get a lot of these engagements and you can tell it's working. So simply put, we care about a large audience seeing and enjoying our posts. Now to really reiterate here, engagements is the key metric when we're thinking about large audience. So for instance, on Facebook, their algorithm really works towards engagement. So if you receive many likes, comments, and shares, on a Facebook post, Facebook's algorithm identifies, hey, this is popular content, and then it actually shows it to people who have not liked that Facebook page before. So you're actually reaching beyond your audience. So this is very important on Facebook, and the same sort of principles apply on LinkedIn. So you're looking for those engagements, very important. All right, next we wanna think about audience and targeting. What do we want our social media, social media channels to serve? Who do we want our social media channels to serve? Members first. So we wanna focus on older members and younger members. We wanna make sure that the content isn't skewed. Also, we wanna focus on potential members. We had an idea added from the group here. I thought it was a great one, and I thought I'd include it here for you. So we'd like to add Facebook page and LinkedIn group links to our district website or district electronic materials like an e-newsletter. So for targeting, our posts should be a variety of posts that speak to different age groups. So for content, now we've got some background and we've had some decisions made. So now we really need to think through, okay, what do we want to post? Can we repurpose anything existing? Will we post the same thing on multiple channels? So here's what we've decided. Some content from Rotary International and around the district would be great to share on our district Facebook page. And this is actually proven to be the best performing content in the past. I love this statement. So if you have some social channels that already exist, 
take a look at the posts that have worked for you in the past, see if you can find a theme there, and then make a point in the future to post that same kind of content. Next, we want to post about district conferences upcoming. So really tease our information using photos from last year. We'd also like to post about district product projects or community projects like Rotary First Harvest or district grants or talking about polio, an initiative that's number one for Rotary, district fellowship events that are happening. Also, we'd like to post spotlights with Rotaracts and Rotarians working together. And we'd like to tease the newsletter. So a little bit of from the newsletter and a link directing back to that newsletter with more information. That's something that's already being created. So we want to drive people to read it. So simply put, our posts highlight district events that have happened or highlight repurposed content that already exists elsewhere. This can be a really nice strategy to take the burden off of you uh, of creating original content, really making it an effort to just repurpose content that already exists. Next, we want to think about engagement. So if someone messages us or maybe comments on one of our posts, who responds and when? And are there any cases we'd like to defer or guide people to other resources? So we decided we need a community manager on our committee to answer basic questions and direct traffic to experts for specific questions. Now to handle our social media for District 5030, we've decided to make a committee, which I lead. However, if you're just thinking about your club's page, you just might want to identify someone that will be there watching these social media channels to answer these questions for a duration of time. We also decided we need a list of experts we could email for answers to questions we may not know. For example, if we have a question on Facebook about district grants, who could we call to get the answer? So in short, really a, a phone tree or a reference. Next, we want to rotate this responsibility monthly between members of this committee. This is a great idea we came to, not only to reduce the burden on someone, but also to give everyone exposure to what's happening and get buy-in from multiple people. This is a great way to get lots of folks excited about what's happening on your social media channels. So simply put, responding to people on our two social media channels will be important to create a valuable community. Right. So you're posting, you've got dialogue going on, and then somebody doesn't get back to you? That's no good. You have to have an engagement plan. Next, marketing communications. How can we let members know our social media channels exist? And are there any other groups besides members we would like to join? If so, how can we let these folks know? We decided we wanted to reach out to our AGs and ask them to augment this effort. So, um, as we found, you know, club presidents tend to be very, uh, very, very busy, as, and so do district governors. So we decided to really target the AGs to ask for their support. Next, at district conferences, we want to have an easel to show how to connect to our social media pages. Just a, a, essentially a basic a poster. Then uh, we would ask members of this committee to do marketing back to their club. So the committee we've established has about six people. So we would ask them to go ahead and share the links to our social media channels back to their club to start getting it out there. We want to feature our social media channels at district training opportunities. So maybe again, another poster or an easel. We want to identify a primary social connection at the clubs. So sometimes a club might have a fellowship chair or even a fellowship committee or one person who's really well connected online. So we want to identify who that is and then empower them and let them know that, uh, that our district has these channels. Next, we want to educate our club. Um, what are the talents needed to be a social media leader for their club? 
So essentially it means using videos like this or other methods to educate people at the club level as well. So simply put, we're spreading the word by leveraging connected individuals close to the club and throughout our district, as well as putting our social information on district web properties and printed materials for marketing and communications. So there you have it. Now, what are the next steps? So we really need to get at this engagement. If someone messages us or comments, who responds, who would like to write or schedule the posts, how would we like to collect photos from district events or general events to repurpose? We've decided there's really three primary roles to fill. So number one, community manager. That's who would be watching our Facebook page and LinkedIn group and getting back to people if they have a question or comment. Next is the content developer. The role of the content developer is to gather potential posts, write them in nice sentences, um, and match them with a photo and then schedule out those posts. Lastly, photography or events. If there's an event happening, we need someone to be there taking the photo so that later the content developer can use those photos to go ahead and post them out. I want to acknowledge that marketing and communications is happening, but it's not a specific role for social media marketing. It's really just how to market social media like we just discussed. So this particular committee decided on a couple different tactics. We decided we want to rotate who's the community manager monthly and request volunteers in an email. We decided we wanted to have a content developer. Everyone will be trained in the next meeting on how to do this. So we've decided and acknowledged that maybe somebody doesn't know how to do this. That's okay. They'll receive coaching later, but at least we'll get someone to volunteer. So for now, we really just want to identify someone to take photos at district events so that we can get our info out on our social media channels later. So now it's time for you to take action. The first step would be to assemble a small team. The next step would, to use, would be to use this PowerPoint to define your strategy. And the last step would be to engage people to take on roles to serve your social media community. I certainly believe that you can absolutely do it. Um, it. This is what I do professionally, really helping train different folks on digital marketing, including social media. But you don't have to be professional to be, good, to be good. You just have to start doing something and you'll find you can easily start making a difference. So the first step might be actually to share this out to a couple other folks that you could potentially have on your team for social media um, so that they can be inspired by this video and use it as well. Thanks so much for your time.